Coming up on this edition of Southwest TV News. The winds of change are blowing within the Swift Current Broncos organization. During a press conference at the IPlex, board chair Trent McLeary announced that head coach Manny Viveros is moving on to a new role as an assistant coach with the Edmonton Oilers. The spotlight will shine on Swift Current in 2019 as the Southwest community hosts the Western Canada Summer Games. The host committee recently welcomed delegates from all participating provinces and territories to tour the sports facilities and other venues set for use next August during the Games. Well, if you dig deep enough, you'll learn more about your roots. Such is the case with a series of archaeological excavations at the Swift Current Airport. Work has taken place at numerous locations of the airport, including this site in 2016. Thanks for joining us here today. Just a few days after participating in the Memorial Cup in Regina, the Swift Current Broncos have made a major announcement. The winds of change are blowing within the Swift Current Broncos organization. During a press conference at the IPlex, board chair Trent McLeary announced that head coach Manny Viveros is moving on to a new role as an assistant coach with the Edmonton Oilers. Diane Sletton is also leaving her role as director of business operations after six years to pursue other interests. Viveros, who led the Broncos to two consecutive playoff runs and a solid effort in the 2018 Memorial Cup, will join the Oilers for the upcoming season. And as he leaves the Swift Current Broncos on a high note, he cherishes the memories and friendships made over the years. I'd like to thank the Bronco organization uh, for taking a chance on me uh, two seasons ago, uh, coming back from Europe. Uh, it wasn't easy to get back in North American circles as far as hockey, and uh, uh, they took a chance on me and uh, entrusted me uh, with an opportunity here in Swift Current. Um, without the Broncos having faith in me and also the coaching staff and what we have in place here, um, this is not possible. I'm so proud of the way our kids uh, handled themselves this year. Uh, on ice and more importantly off ice. I thought their kids are great ambassadors for the city of Swift Current, the Broncos organization and the Western Hockey League here. They're great, great young kids and you know, I always said this before, our job as, as a staff and organization is not just to produce uh, talented hockey players, is to produce uh, um, outstanding citizens going forward. And as he offers his assistance in finding a new head coach for the Broncos, he stresses the importance of a team effort on and off the ice. For me, that was the biggest pleasure, is being able to come in here seamlessly with the, with the coaching staff that was here before. And we, we hit it off right away, we get along real good, we're really good friends. And uh, when you're having fun when you go to work, uh, you know, good things can happen here. So, um, but I think it is very important, um, you know, the Broncos uh, going forward, uh, the style of play that we're accustomed to, our identity, uh, so to speak, on ice like that, continues to go forward. And it's nothing new. It's, that's just the way hockey is nowadays. A positive trend which the Broncos board also hope to continue well into the future as they now look for a new head coach. And whoever comes in, that will be their job is to inform the board and to, to, not that we want to get in the weeds, but just keep us informed. Like, what direction are you going? And Manny always did that. He always phoned. It's like, yeah, this is available. It's, uh, it's going to be a blockbuster. It's like, okay, well, is this what you need? These are the resources you need to succeed. Go for it. And, uh, and he did that, and we were successful. It could have been the other way, though. We could have lost in Game 7 against Regina, and <coughs> things worked out. And that's where, with sport, you have to take those calculated risks. And as Diane Sletton moves on to other opportunities yet to be announced, she cherishes her time with the Broncos over the past six years and hopes that positive effort of building a sense of community and pride for the local WHL team will continue. I'm very, very proud of everything that we've accomplished and where it's at. And I'm, I do feel like I'm leaving in a really, somebody in a really good position coming in. So to me, I think it's more... You need somebody now with some business experience and can really take it to that next level. It, it is a true business and really run with it that way. Um, and of course, looking for some new marketing ideas and things like that are, are always going to be important. But, but running it a business now and, and making sure we are continuing to be that sustainable um, organization that, that I know we are right now. As the board of directors for the Swift Current Broncos seek out new personnel in the coming weeks, additional announcements are expected as new faces come on board.
Frontier Days has been a tradition in Swift Current for 80 years. And as the Swift Current Ag and X celebrates this milestone in 2018, an exciting lineup of entertainment awaits you. Including the Frontier Days Parade, CCA Rodeo, Grandstand Entertainment with the James Barker Band and Bobby Wills, and the sights and sounds of the Midway. Frontier Days in Swift Current, June 28th through July 1st. Hats off to 80 years. With the countdown to the 2019 Western Canada Summer Games, the City of Swift Current is putting the finishing touches on all the details. The spotlight will shine on Swift Current in 2019 as the Southwest community hosts the Western Canada Summer Games. Over the 10 days, 1,700 athletes from across Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Alberta, Yukon, the Northwest Territories and Nunavut will compete in 16 sports. The host committee recently welcomed delegates from all participating provinces and territories to tour the sports facilities and other venues set for use next August during the Games, spurring a sense of excitement and optimism for the 2019 event. Very impressed with uh, the planning work that Swift Current has done so far. The, uh, the leadership of the staff team, the leadership of the volunteer champions in the community is, is great. And, uh, you know, in talking to my colleagues across, across the West, everyone seems very pleased with uh, the planning to date. And we're excited, uh, 14 months to go, and we'll, we'll all be here. And as the athletes, coaches, and other team members prepare to get in the game in 2019, they're looking forward to the experience in southwest Saskatchewan. Oh, number one thing is competition. Uh, just uh, getting all of our athletes coming to, to Swift Current and, and competing against all the Western provinces and territories and uh, just seeing them grow uh, as uh, uh, an athlete and uh, seeing how they uh, compete against uh, their fellow Western Canadians. Uh, we're probably going to be uh, probably about 200, 200 plus. We should have uh, six to seven uh, sports uh, first phase as well as the second phase. So we'll have a nice balance, yeah, and uh, it will be one of our larger, I think, teams uh, coming to a Western Games. And the city of Swift Current and the surrounding region has full support of the province as it's made a major investment into hosting the Games. So the provincial government uh, has uh, contributed and will be contributing up until the Games $1.5 million uh, to hosting the Games in Swift Current. And uh, we're, we're very happy to make that contribution and uh, I know that that money is going to be well invested here in all the different uh, great uh, um, program pieces that will happen with the Games. Uh, the facilities are, uh, are, are second to none. In the coming weeks, test trials of various sports including kayaking, open water swimming and triathlon events will all take place to further ensure all venues are ready for the Games, with a range of merchandise now available for sale to the general public. Our initial stuff is here, so they can come pick it up today at lunch, or actually after today it'll be sold at the museum. And then as we get closer to the Games, we're going to see more merchandise roll out, so there'll be lots to choose from. The 2019 Western Canada Summer Games are set for August 9th through the 18th in Swift Currents, with the full schedule available online. Frontier Days has been a tradition in Swift Current for 80 years. And as the Swift Current Ag and X celebrates this milestone in 2018, an exciting lineup of entertainment awaits you. Including mini chuck wagon and wild pony races and the FMX motocross show. And dance the night away during two exciting cabarets featuring Mitch Rock and the 454 Band and the Chris Buck Band. Frontier Days in Swift Current, June 28th through July 1st. Hats off to 80 years. The Swift Current Museum continues to shine the spotlight on the history of the local airport. We find out more in this report. Well, if you dig deep enough, you'll learn more about your roots. Such is the case with a series of archaeological excavations at the Swift Current Airport. Work has taken place at numerous locations of the airport, including this site in 2016. Kara Palio is a project archaeologist with Western Heritage and was the guest speaker during the latest Lunch and Learn presentation at the Swift Current Museum. Kara is working alongside the museum on this historical project and says this is one of the more unique excavations she's worked on. 
but this is a pretty unique location. I mean, we have a lot of experience with doing historic sites, but how often does a uh, World War II airport refuse dump come <laughs> up, right? I guess I'm not necessarily surprised, but it was really interesting to see how productive the um, second anomaly was, the anomaly that was away from the, from the junk pile. So um, the junk pile, clearly there was material there because there's a big junk pile, but we weren't 100% uh, sure if there was actually a pit beneath it or if it was just a pile sitting on the ground surface. So that was, that was really interesting to find and kind of um, prove our suspicions that, that there were definitely buried plane parts there. The other, where we put the first trench, that anomaly was, was a bit of a surprise. We weren't, you know, we, we were doing exploratory near-surface geophysics to find other locations, and we did, and it ended up being quite productive with a lot of uh, different types of um, mess hall-style materials, so that was really neat to find as well. The excavation site dates back to the number 39 flight training school for the war effort. With the Swift Current Museum learning about the pit and what may be buried there through a chance conversation. This took place during the production of the History of the Swift Current Aerodrome video as part of the Stories of the Great Southwest series. So our guest narrator in this project was a, an interesting fellow by the name of Roy Spence, who was 93 at the time and um, served here at number 39 service tri flying training school from November of 41 until the spring of 43. Quietly leaned across the table and asked me if I knew about the pit. And then he began telling me the story about the pit. And local folklore dictates that, uh, according to Mr. Spence, when the, when the RAF shut down their operation, um, parts of aircraft, engines, that kind of stuff, may have ended up, or he says it went into a pit, they covered it out, covered it over, and, and left. So. Our project is to uncover these aircraft artifacts and, and use them in an exhibition that will be housed at the Swift Current Airport. And as the Swift Current Museum and Western Heritage plan out the next phase of the project, the history of Swift Current will continue to be the central focus of future excavations. It's a lot like when you're looking at any um, heritage material. I mean, you could go look at a, at a building that was built a hundred years ago and say, well, build me a, a new building with new stuff. Well, no, it's part of our heritage. There's a lot of information there to find out about the day-to-day -day life of what the materials that, that, that were there, that they were using. And it, it has value to the community. I mean, people were here to find out what was going on and it's part of the heritage of Swift Current, so I think that there'd be a lot of, uh, a lot of interest in that kind of stuff. In the coming weeks, the Swift Current Museum will try to secure a grant for a summer student and attract volunteers to help with upcoming exploration of the site this summer at the airport, with hopes of uncovering more unique items from Swift Current's history. historical show in many, many ways. Yeah, it's extremely unique. Looking through here, it's kind of the story of the art in Saskatchewan. I'm Kim Hotelling, I'm the director and curator with the Art Gallery of Swift Current, and we're very pleased to present the exhibition Art for Sale. Well, this brings to a close another episode of Southwest TV News, reporting the stories that matter to you. We always welcome your news tips. You can always reach us here by phone at our studio or by email to contact us at southwesttvnews.com. Also, be sure to join us daily online for the latest news from across southwest Saskatchewan and so much more at southwesttvnews.com. And be sure to follow us on a range of social media. Thanks for joining us here today. I'm Carol Andrews.